I have been sent this video made by a channel called Science is Dope and then I am asked to respond to it. Now I did go through this video a couple of times and I really found it amazing. Now before I say anything I genuinely hope that the gentleman who has created this video on Science is Dope channel he will not send any copyright claims or strikes because a that's exactly what he expects from guys that smile to Jenna not to do and secondly what well, this is how the conversation how the narrative building is done because you listen to each other now with this hope that this will not happen let me respond to some important parts of it starting with this one i've said on multiple occasions that the main reason why religion survives is because of childhood indoctrination this is true of every single religion be it hinduism or islam or christianity you name it before a child learns how to think it's taught what to think and sometimes this indoctrination is so strong that even if the child develops critical thinking later in life he or she never applies it to their own religion in philosophy it is said that if you want to ascertain the truth value of any claim then one of the best ways of doing so is by apply the truth value on that very claim so in this case gentleman is saying that the religion survives only because of dogma because people believe in religion and that's that well is that really the case because if that would be the case and same would be true for atheism so if you're unborn atheist then you would have a dogma in favor of atheism and if that is not the case for example if this gentleman was not born an atheist and he changed then that is exactly what he did not say because what he's saying is once you're religious you cannot change but he himself did and if he did not then he is equally dogmatic because he were born atheist and he is an atheist anyway let's move to the more substantive part shall we you're right darwin's theory of natural selection is not indisputable in fact it is not even the currently accepted theory of evolution darwinian evolution doesn't have any knowledge of genetics epigenetics dna etc what biologists accept today is called the modern synthesis of evolution which includes darwinian ideas as only a part of it no that's just wrong because modern synthesis is just a technical scientific name for neo-darwinism and it doesn't just include some parts of darwinian evolution it contains 50% of it and that is exactly what is taught everywhere in the world that's why it is called the textbook biology but he did mention things like epigenetics and so forth well that is the extended evolutionary synthesis not modern synthesis now for someone who believes evolution to be true i was expecting to understand this basic difference between what a modern synthesis is or what the extended evolutionary synthesis is the bacteria example you gave is an example for natural selection why do bacteria become resistant to antibiotics the antibiotics kill off most of the bacteria but the few that are resistant survive and pass on their resistance to the next generation now no matter how many antibiotics you have these resistant bacteria will continue to survive and reproduce and they're just going to produce more resistant bacteria this is how antibiotic resistance develops again no it does not work like this and this is not an evidence for natural selection because for nature to select something there has to be something to be selected ie a mutation that confers some kind of benefit but that doesn't happen in the world of bacteria what does happen is that the plasmids are horizontally transferred within the same generation because bacteria they have this amazing ability to do so it's not that the antibiotics are given and then some mutation happens and then the nature acts upon those and selects them and then it passes on to the next generation and the next generation is better resistant no sir it happens in the same generation and it is not beneficial for other areas but that is a topic which requires a lot of discussion i am making a quick video to respond and my response is that no sir you are wrong again there is a thing called horizontal genes transfer and that is responsible for developing resistance against antibiotics it has nothing to do with mutations nothing to do with natural selection it seems to me like no matter what level of evidence you see you'll find a way to deny it 
Now this is really interesting one because seemingly guys at Smile to Jannah were saying that look you can have microevolution or adaptation though some scientists actually dissuade people from using this term microevolution but there is an evidence for it but the same evidence cannot be extrapolated into macroevolution i.e. new kinds of animal coming into existence through the process of evolution. Now that is what they are saying that people assume that the evidence for the former is also the evidence for the latter and the response our gentleman at science is dope well his response is that well no matter what evidence is produced you will always find a way to, re to reject it now that seems to me is just like another way of saying that hey i don't have any evidence but that is your fault because if i did give one then my accusation is that you will deny it Let's say you're in court. You're accusing me of murdering someone. You found a murder weapon with my fingerprints on it. But I can just say, hey, this only proves that I held the murder weapon, not that I committed the murder. The investigators now find DNA evidence. Maybe my hair was found at the scene and a witness comes forward uh, saying that they saw me run away from the scene. And I can just say, hey, this only means that I was at the crime scene doesn't prove that I committed the murder. Even if the court finds actual CCTV footage of me committing the murder, I can just say, hey, this CCTV footage has been edited by someone who's clearly trying to frame me. I can keep dodging all the accusations like this, but after a point, the court is going to find me guilty of murder because the court doesn't need to know 100% that I committed the crime. It just needs to know beyond any reasonable doubt that I'm the murderer and it has enough evidence for that. Now I did say that the last part was interesting but trust me this one is even more interesting because I have background in law and I love to read science and I communicate science so this is a brilliant convergence here. What gentleman did is he used an analogy of a courtroom where a murder trial is taking place and then he used the principle of um, the burden of proof which in criminal proceedings is that you have to prove something beyond reasonable doubt and he applied that on Darwinian claims and there is a very good reason that he's wrong and the reason is that when you have enough evidence pointing towards something and it, it goes beyond reasonable, reasonable doubt, that's perfectly fine. No one would deny that. But does Darwinian evolution work like that? Answer is no. For example, just look at the two claims within the opening claim. That the natural selection acts upon random mutation and it selects or preserves the mutations that have some kind of benefit it confers benefit or oh, those changes are not just in somatic cells but actually they are in germline cells so they can be passed on to the next generation but how do we know that the mutation that happens is random what is the scientific evidence for that anything that can take us beyond reasonable doubt that it is all stochastic given the fact that it is responsible for everything including the gentleman who is running the channel science is dope so he's just a product of some accident random mutation what is the scientific evidence for that? And then why do we think nature selects? And what does it even mean for nature to select? Is that a passive filter or is that a creative force? I hope the answer is it is not a creative force because if it were, then it would be required to create new mutations that it cannot. But still we believe that it doesn't care. It has no intelligent design. It is almost stochastic for all practical purposes but it is intelligent enough to predict which mutations are going to be beneficial take us beyond reasonable doubt the modern theory of evolution is something confirmed by countless pieces of evidence and well accepted by every legitimate biologist in the field that it's foolish to believe that it's not the case now this is cliche redefined Almost all evolutionists say the same thing, but when you ask them questions and deconstruct this claim, some amazing results show up. For example, this gentleman mentioned epigenetics earlier, and then later on he's saying that everybody believes evolution, or all the respectable scientists, they believe in evolution, or they believe evolution to be true. But then, if he thinks epigenetics is true, then why is it that almost all all scientists who believe Darwinian evolution to be true are the same scientists who believe that epigenetics is discredited. The tree of life is based on the idea of homology, which is the assumption that two species with similar genes and anatomy have evolved from a common ancestor. 
left as it is, it's just an assumption, not a conclusion based on evidence. All right, now this is just a plain lie. Homology is not an assumption. You can observe and conclude the similarity in bone structure across different mammals, like monkeys and bats and whales, and they clearly show that they're all descended from a common ancestor that had this bone structure. And that is exactly what you call an assumption. Because what you have is data, fossils, possibly genetic material. And you see resemblance between them and that is all what you have. But to say that they evolved from a common ancestor, that is the assumption, which is why homology is called an assumption. Let me explain it in a different way. If I say that God had created species, animals in different geological layers, different times, and my evidence is that you see the fossil record, how you find different animals. Obviously, your objection to that would be, oh no, you cannot fit God into this because all you have is data. You are just assuming God did it. Now, scientifically and philosophically speaking, it would be a very sound argument. But the problem now is that by creating this argument, you have set a standard and that standard will be applied everywhere, including on evolution. Now, when we apply the same standard on evolution, we find ourselves in some very difficult waters. Just like we cannot fit God into it, we cannot fit evolution into it, except if we assume that evolution is responsible for it. In the end, I would like to make our gentleman an offer. Why not have a pure scientific debate on Darwinian evolution? Now, your channel says science is dope, and if we apply the contemporary meaning of dope on science, then yeah, I agree, science is dope. But it doesn't mean that every fairy tale, including Darwinian evolution, is also science. I am looking forward to your positive reply.